We've been doing the Hope and Human Rights Speaker Series for quite some time now. As we all know, it takes a community, it takes a village to get anything done worth doing. And we feel that Artists for Human Rights has brought together a community of dedicated advocates for human rights. And that's all of you guys. We all know that artists make a huge difference in changing the viewpoint, changing hearts and minds overnight, whether it's through their music or their films or their painting. Uh, they affect the culture, they are the culture, and in any great culture there are always great artists, and any time there's a dictatorship, a repressive regime, the first ones that get hit are the artists. And so we're very fortunate tonight to have Soraya, who's making a huge difference, and has been making a huge difference in Afghanistan. I eventually came to the United States as a refugee. I went back after 15 years being away from Afghanistan to that country in search of finding peace. Because I was an American citizen, I could help so many people in my native country. We established an organization called Help the Afghan Children. Three generations of that country is born and raised in war. They have never seen peace and love. The word peace is a foreign word to them. What that nation is lacking isn't food. It's not medicine. It's education. It's what they did not have for 30 years. It's what we have to Given. It, is, it is the only way that we can change people in that part of the world. It's easy, it's cheap, it's the right thing to do, it's the human right. Education is the only way that I see an outlet for the cycle of endless war in that country. The documentary that was made about you, Inshallah, a Diary of an Afghan Woman, was made in 2002. You actually started it just before 9-11 right. and finished it after 9-11. Yes. I would be curious to know what kind of changes you see in Afghanistan now. I mean, it's been 10 years. A lot of positive changes. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can start from um, establishing a new constitution, uh, women's rights millions of girls and boys going back to schools, building thousands of schools, roads, bridges. And there are a lot of positive changes since 9-11 or since 2001. And I'm very happy to report that six million kids are going back to schools mm -hmm. now. And that's a huge change. Mm -hmm. You probably know that they were barred from going to schools for years mm -hmm. during the Taliban era. How many schools have been built since 2002? In general, the Ministry of Education built over 3,000 schools. Mm. With the cooperation of the Ministry of Education, we provided innovative programs such as peace education program, computer literacy for girls. We also introduced uh, environmental education, landmine awareness, as you probably uh, know that. Um, there are over 10 million landmines still in Afghanistan that threaten the life of kids. So we're trying to educate kids how to avoid landmines. So these are the programs that we've introduced to over 100,000 of students. There are a lot of people in this country that say now that uh, bin Laden is dead, that uh, we don't need to be there anymore and we should get out. Did we actually send over 100? 40,000 soldiers to catch one man. The question is not just that one person, it is the ideology that we are fighting. We are fighting extremism. If we see every day that a 14 years old kid is blowing himself up just because he wants to hurt himself and others, mm -hmm. something is wrong with that picture. That means our mission is not over. While the world was celebrating the end of the Soviet era, something else was brewing in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Extremism. Mm -hmm. It was a land without law. 
and the absence of the attention of the international community, what we are seeing right now is the result of that negligence. The world can no longer afford to have that. Mm -hmm. We should definitely not make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we should stay there forever. I'm saying we should stay there long enough for that nation to be able to stand up. Thank you very much, Soraya. My pleasure. Thank you. I really love coming here and listening to all the speakers. I think Artists for Human Rights is really doing a wonderful thing, especially because a lot of people come here, they don't really know anything about the topic, but they come with open ears, open heart, and they discover about something in a part of the world that they had no idea. It just gives you a much more of a worldwide view, and then you start, I start thinking about, oh yeah, you know, I always had this plan to help with human rights. You know, there's so many causes in the world to fight for, and I think everyone should fight for the one that makes them the angriest. And nothing makes me angrier than uh, any type of injustice. In any country that's got suppression that is a ruling body, whether it's Aung San Chi in Burma and Myanmar, uh, or it's, it's someone like Soraya in Afghanistan, it's having the courage to stand up knowing that you are fighting a system that has been entrenched for so long. The issues of Afghanistan require a certain activism. We have to be part of a decision made about what happens in Afghanistan. It's not enough to say we are going to leave. What are we going to leave? Let's have, help them have establish a democracy within the context of an Afghan culture. We cannot and we should not export our version of democracy. It is not going to work. It has to be homegrown. But how, how are we going to get there is by educating people. Thank you very much. <laughs>